invitation for you to visit Opryland, the official destination of NASCAR. More information on Opryland is yours by calling 615-889-6611 Monday through Friday. Folks there would love to talk to you about Opryland USA. We're racing tonight at Myrtle Beach Speedway in South Carolina. The NASCAR Bush Grand National star Steve Park is charging, trying to get closer to the two leaders who you see there, Elliot Sadler, who's been on the point the entire way so far. And the 33 of Tim Fidoa, who has moved to second. Steve Park, we've documented his progress. He's up to 21st. His Park, after starting back in the 27th spot tonight, we told you how he wrecked at practice yesterday. They've thrashed on the backup car for an entire day to try to get him in the ballpark. Steve Park now racing with Randy Porter for 20th spot. We jump on board with the Unifirst machine of Randy Porter looking back at Steve Park. They've worked and they've changed everything, Bill Venture. And he doesn't look like Park has quite the speed he wanted to have tonight. No, but I'd say probably 50% of the parts on that car came off the car he wrecked in practice yesterday. They took this car out in practice, qualified it. They weren't really happy with it. They worked on it all night last night, this morning. They took every part that they thought would help the car handle better off of the other car, put it on this car. Seems to be working. But I'll tell you one thing. Steve's got to be driving his his rear end off to, to, to drive the car like he is because he's in a car that wasn't really set up for Myrtle Beach. That's an intermediate track car you were telling us earlier. And they've changed it a lot and they're working on it to try to get it in contention. Park the winner earlier in Nashville this season as first career NASCAR Bush Series victory. The AC Delco Chevrolet still battling for 20th spot. Mike Coggle, where do they stand down there in Steve Park's pit? Well, they only had 15 minutes of practice today and one team had hurt as much as anybody was Steve Park because they changed, as you said, everything on the car this morning and the car was really loose when they went out for the practice. So the car is not as good as they had hoped it would be after changing everything, but they hope to work on it some during the race and it's like everybody else, they hope to be around at the end. Park trying to rest 20th away now from Randy Porter in the 48. As we come up to put 40 laps on the scoreboard here tonight at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Rick Benjamin, Patty Boyce, Bill Venturini, and Mike Cogwood with you on a Saturday night. We've got a, a full jam-packed weekend of live NASCAR racing action for you here on TNN. Don't forget our coverage of the Jiffy Loop 300 tomorrow from New Hampshire International Speedway, 1 o'clock Eastern. We'll preview it for you at noontime Eastern on race day, and then our special Jiffy Loop 300 preview at 12.30 Eastern time tomorrow, all from New Hampshire International Speedway. The seventh car, Danny Edwards Jr. running 19. He had a good qualifying run. This is only his first time in that Ed Whitaker machine. Started up in the top group of cars, but he has backpedaled as we check in on the leaders. Looks like Sadler there about to lap uh, perhaps the 64 car which Jim Sauter is wheeling tonight. Those guys at the back right there are going to start to get just a little bit desperate. They don't want to go a lap down now because a lot of them know if they can just get a caution and get in, they can do some things to help those cars. And, uh, and those are some good cars he's about to put a lap down if, if they're not real careful. He's going to need to take some patience here. Take a look back from the Duraloop Chevrolet. Jim Sauter piloting that machine tonight in relief of Dick Trickle. Oh! <laughs> yeah. That's a thing. We used to call that the chrome horn. I guess you'd say that's the uh, the steel horn now. Yeah, you don't see chrome bumpers anymore. <laughs> the only problem is that with Elliot running into him, I can see that the front of the whole nose is closed up. It's closed up the air uh, air going in, so now he's only down at the uh, on the bottom. It's only drawing air off the bottom now. He may that may cause him a problem later on tonight. And we haven't really told you why Jim Sauter is driving the Dural Loop machine tonight. Mike Conklin is an interesting story. What's the situation with Dick Trickle? Well, if you remember uh, in the race at Daytona, the Winston Cup race, that big wreck on the last lap, Dick Trickle was in that. He injured his knee. He's had some fluid on the knee all week. It has really been sore. They drained the knee. He was really too hurt to come race tonight, and that's saying something when you're talking about Dick Trickle. They're hoping he can make it all the way tomorrow in the Winston Cup race, but they didn't want to take a chance and have him get re-injured here in this bush race tonight. Dick Trickle with the bad knee, Jim Sauter in the 64. Sauter, his Wisconsin buddy, the father of Jay Sauter, who drives the Richard Childress three on the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, and Jim making his first Bush Series start of the season tonight in that 64, and he's refusing to let Elliott Sadler get by. Well, yeah, like Patty's oh, oh, he gets he's turned. He's getting a little help. <laughs> and he goes way high and around right in front of the lead cars up in turn two. Sadler jumps on the brakes. I don't think he did much damage to the car as we go inside the 64. Sauter gets it refired, drops it in gear. Caution flag waving for the first time tonight here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Sauter puts the visor up. Looks like he may have flat spotted a tire at the very least. And Elliot Sadler back on the button will bring the field around to the caution flag. With that uh, breaking and checking up, I think he may have lost the lead. Well, that's why I said patience was going to be key for him. And look, it really hurt the 33 car here. Um, you know, leading the race.
race like that, they're awful good and they're awful strong. And, uh, you know, I know he was, it's just getting a little bit impatient right there. Really wants to get by that car, but uh, that guy is, you know, racing hard not to go a lap down. Jim Sauter trying to hang on to the lead lap, and it ultimately didn't work out. Now, Tim Fidua had moved up to second spot. He was bird dog in the 29 of Sadler there, but in that uh, nose-to-tail action up until, which we'll show you once again as they race into one. How did you see this, Bill Venturini? Yeah, well, you can see Elliot got a little impatient, got into Dick, he, I mean, into Jim, got him a little sideways, and then when he came across the nose of Elliot, Tim had nowhere to go because Elliot locked up. Tim ran right in the back end of Elliot Sailor. Now both the cars that were running one and two both have fr uh, crushed front noses. Here it is coming down into one. We saw from the in-car shot how Sadler put the bumper to Sauter earlier. Here's another love tap, and that starts Sauter around coming off two. Yeah, I thought he had it saved pretty much, but then when he overcorrected, it came back around, did the wiggle, and then came right across in the front. Now, Nathan Butke took advantage, as did Jeff Purvis. They snuck around the outside as the cars were racing back around to the stripe to pick up the first couple of spots here. So as we take you inside the 64 once again, that's got Jim Sauter at the controls tonight. There has been a lead change. Elliot Sadler gives up the point. Nathan Bunke will have the restart lead when we come back to Myrtle Beach Speedway. Gunder Green to Myrtle Beach Speedway. It's uh, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, the NASCAR Bush Series tonight on TNN Motorsports. And Nathan Bunke in the 78 car is your leader. Right behind him is Jeff Purvis in the 28. That's the white machine there. They took advantage of that last skirmish a moment ago to grab the top two spots away from Elliot Sadler and Tim Fidoa. Now, Fidoa is okay. He is third, a little further back. But Elliot Sadler came out of pit road, and he's got to go a long way. He's on the lead lap, but uh, pretty far back. Mike Hogwood, what are they facing down there? Well, he had to come in and change four tires. Crew Chief Sandy Jones said, hey, Elliot, just honk the horn and get around that 64. And he was just a little too impatient doing it. And this was the problem. As you can see, it's circled in yellow. The tire is flat spotted, and Elliot had to come in for four tires and lost some valuable track position. Sadler being shown in 28th spot, running by himself. Now, doesn't seem as though the car's damaged, and that car has been a rocket all weekend long, so I think we'll see him back toward the front fairly soon. As we check in on the leaders, Jeff Purvis now starting to reel in Butkey as they race off turn four. Still a couple of car legs to lead for David. Yeah, they've really opened up a, a good lead, those two cars, and it's kind of surprising. Those are two non-regulars on the series, and so you don't see that up at the front that often, but uh, they're really running good right now. Purvis qualified second quick, so he's been strong since they unloaded the Curb Records Opryland Chevrolet this weekend, and he's running very nicely right now. And Nathan Bucky was the third fastest car. Yeah. He had the third and second fastest cars that qualified running up front. I mean, I know it doesn't seem right because they're not regular, but they were quick all weekend, so it's showing uh, why they're leading. We talked about the point battle at the top of the broadcast. Randy LeJoy with a 32-point lead over Todd Bodine. And then a couple of hundred points back to third, fourth, and fifth in the season standings. LeJoy has gained a little ground. Todd Bodine has as well. But they're a little further back in the pack as we watch this battle for the lead. We put 58 on the board already here tonight. So these cars setting a very, very quick pace. And further back in the pack, this is the battle for fifth. The 17 car, that's Matt Kenseth in the Kraft Chevrolet. And the 37 car, one of the Green brothers, that's Mark Green from Owensboro, Kentucky, and the Timberwolf Chevrolet. And they've been going at it nicely, too, here in the early stages. Yeah, I promised Mark I wouldn't call him Dave. <laughs> I'm sure he's glad to hear that. Well, that. That's a little personal joke. He was teasing me earlier. Both David and Jeff Green up in New Hampshire tonight, no doubt watching their brother's progress here at Myrtle Beach this evening as that battle continues for fifth and sixth. Kenseth has done a nice job, too. Now, he didn't start the season in that car. Tim Bender drove the 17 back in the early stages of the year. He jumped out of one of the best rides, if not the best ride, in ASA stock car competition to take over the 17, and he's turned in some good runs. Ty Bodine, meantime, second in points. He is on the move. Ty Bodine right now up to seventh. And look at Robert Presley right back there, too, in the Geschichter Chevrolet, the Sunoco 47. He just moved into that car a few weeks back. They've struggled, but it looks like Robert may be at home here tonight at Myrtle Beach. Yeah, he's not struggling. One tonight. You can see he's pretty comfortable back running the Bush program. Hey, you know, really, he hasn't been on this kind of racetrack other than South Boston uh, a couple of weeks ago in a long, long time. They just don't run tracks this small in the Winston Cup Series, so it does take a little bit to get your rhythm back. Catches to the 17th and 5th. So this is the battle for 5th spot. 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th right now. Robert Presley holding down 8th in the Sunoco Chevrolet. So we've got a good one underway a little further back in the pack of the car that's directly in front of them. You saw Shane Hall motor through your picture just a moment ago in the 85, the Lux Foods car. Robert Presley with some tire donuts on the outside of the 47 as well. He 